Yo, what is up, Kings? Wanted to make a quick video. I wasn't able to make a video last week. I've recorded this literally two times already because I got the new microphone. It finally dawned on me doing as many car ride rants as I do. I should just get a clip-on mic because given how well the car ride rants do without good audio quality, I should really do a car ride rant. So anyways, the topic today is should women play sports? And, you know, furthermore, should you be pro women playing sports? Should you be okay with women playing sports? So I'm just going to very quickly, by the way, guys, smash that subscribe button. We're really close to a thousand subscribers. I appreciate all your guys' support. This channel is going to continue to grow. It's got a bright future, and I thank you guys tremendously. <clears throat> so right off the bat, I I'll start with the one positive to me that women playing sports have for women. And it's not really like a positive for anybody else but the women. Like when men play sports, there are positives, much like anything that men do, there are positives that far out, out go outside just what they're doing in that given moment in time. And the reason that that is is because men, even though there's a feminization of men, men have not stopped doing masculine things. The primary gender shift has happened with women and you have these women trying to do masculine things and of course they can't do it very well so they don't have these superseding uh, positives that extend outwardly like uh, men do. So the one positive for women is that it helps them stay in shape. Uh, you know, you see these professional, now albeit they're the top 1% of athletes, but you see these, uh, these professional volleyball chicks with these fat asses. Uh, you know, they're also usually pretty tall. Uh, you have, uh, you know, the professional soccer players, they usually have a pretty athletic, uh, nice legs, short stature physique, although some of them are tall. So that's, that's like the only positive that primary positive that I can think of. I mean, there are perhaps secondary positives, um, you know, like it, it aids with learning teamwork and, uh, you know, one of the secondary positives that I talked about the previous couple of times that I record this and fucked up is that um, even to this day, a majority of the time men are the coaches. And so if women play sports, they do have a masculine uh, figure that they are deferring to, which is positive. But even that is a negative because much like in the workplace where women end up taking on what's known as work husbands uh, and they end up deferring to their boss rather than their husband, you know, women playing sports is kind of training them for that, which I'm going to circle, you know, you start seeing that all of this makes sense because there is a, conserv uh, a concerted effort to make it so. So <clears throat> those would be the small positives, I would say. Now, the negatives are, if you think about a woman's, and, and a lot of the issues are going to lie in the natural biology of a woman. And with something like this, and, and I'll let you guys know, I was not always super red-pilled on this, okay? And, and I understand if you're not either, all right? Now, I was never as bad as some people who think and lie to themselves that women are just as strong as men and stuff like that. That's total lunacy. I never thought that. But one of the negatives 
which lies in biology, a woman's biological makeup, especially if she goes on to play in college, if she, especially if she plays Division One, or, uh, you know, but pretty much across the board in college, which albeit is like the top one to two percent of the female athletes, they end up wasting four to five years of their most fertile life, part of their life devoted to sports, which is absolutely ridiculous when you think about it. And I remember I used to, when I, even before I was red pilled on this subject, I would watch women's sports like in, in the Olympics and stuff. And it would always pop in the back of my mind, you know, because men always view women in their like feminine nurturing uh, manner. It dawned on me, what if they got pregnant? How unnatural is that men wouldn't have to do this? How unnatural is that, that they would have to take a year away from their sport in order to have that kid? Maybe a little bit less. I mean, maybe they could keep playing the sport for a couple of months. But anyways, going back, trying to keep this focused, they waste four to five years because I played Division One water polo. I know the time, the energy, and the focus that is asked of co collegiate athletes. It is a full time job. So nine, and I saw it with these with these women that I went to school with. Ninety nine percent of them don't have time to look around seriously to find a part a, a, a mate. Fuck, I almost said partner. A mate. A husband. They don't have the time to do so. So <clears throat> it, it's it's absolutely crazy. And you look back at like other points in history, and it, you look at how far the timeline of a woman's biology has been moved up. It, it's it's astonishing. Even girls that play sports in like high school. And stuff like that. Like, if you go back like 200 years, they would have been married by now. Now, I'm not saying that I necessarily advocate for that per se. You know, the, the fact is, in modernity, a woman's life starts at, you know, 18, uh, you know, anywhere from like 16 to 18 within America. So, one of the huge negatives is by far the fact that they end up wasting a ton of time in their most fertile time frame of their life. All right, guys, I'm going to make a part two. I don't have time to finish this one. I'll make a part two. Thank you guys for watching. Be bad. Don't be a pussy alone. Facts are feelings because your feelings just matter. Love you, Kings. Christ is King. See you guys next time. Peace.